Hey guys, welcome to this week's Whiteboard Wednesday, where I solve coding problems on a whiteboard in a real interview setting. And it's a weekly series, so make sure you subscribe down there. So let's see what today's problem is. So here's this week's problem. You're given a king and a queen on the chessboard. How would you determine if the king is threatened by the queen or not? So I think at a high level, I understand the problem. But do you mind if I just write it down over here? And I have a few questions and we'll go into Yeah, sure, later. go ahead. Okay. So let's say I have an input of the two pieces on chessboard. To be more precise, we have the coordinates of king and the queen. Okay, that's so that's that's better. So coordinates in terms of x, y coordinates? Yep. So it can be kx, ky, and qx, ky. Okay, perfect. So let's say I have kx ky, qx, and qy. And for the output, then I'm just returning a boolean to say whether or not it's threatened. Correct. So true or false. Now, I think in order for, so even before I go into the problem, is it possible for there to be other pieces on the board that are blocking the ways? No, we just have the king and the queen. Okay, so that, that makes it much easier. Mm -hmm. um, so in order for us to see whether or not it's threatened, I think there will be about four scenarios. Mm -hmm. So let me, let me just go through all of them. So I know the chessboard is 8x8, eight eight, but just for simplification purposes, let me draw a matrix of 4x4. Four four. Mm -hmm. And let's say I have the, I have the queen over... I have the queen over here, mm -hmm. and in order for the first scenario to hold, let's say the first scenario is that the king is vertical mm -hmm. to the queen. So this is K. So in this case, it is on the same vertical axis. Mm -hmm. So that would mean that the X, so let me, let me just write down the coordinates here. 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the queen's coordinates are 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. And the king's coordinates are 1 and 4. Correct. Okay, so in this case we know that 1 equals 1 and that's how it's threatened. Mm -hmm. And that means that its x coordinate has to be equal. So the first scenario is vertical. Mm -hmm. And if K X equals Q X. We know that it's certain. Mm -hmm. Now the other scenario would be that it's horizontal. Let's say I have the K over here, and this would work the same way as the vertical scenario, but we will be looking at the Y axis. Mm -hmm. So if I say horizontal. If ky goes to qy, it's true, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Then the other scenario, actually there are just three scenarios, because the other mm -hmm. scenario is diagonal. So I, I know I mentioned four before, but it's just three. So if I erase the k's from here, this, the third one would be if the k is diagonal. And in this case, its coordinates would be 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. So this is a little trickier than, than the vertical and horizontal. So the way I would look at this is I would see whether or not K falls on this line. Mm -hmm. And in, in this case, then, I have two points over here. And I would be looking at this this line in particular. So I know it is an eight by eight matrix. So this kind of limits us to this particular square. Mm -hmm. And in this case, let's let's just write down what the values are in this case for this square. So this is one two. Uh, one, two, so this side is three and 
this side is three as well. Mm -hmm. And for it to be a square then, and we have a diagonal, so this would be a 45 degree angle. Mm -hmm. And as we were looking at this particular diagonal, I think it boils down to, so length of it boils down to nine plus nine is 18. Um, nine times two, so it's three root two. Mm -hmm. So this would be three root two. So I, I think, think I... You are on the correct path, mm -hmm. but maybe you are overthinking it a bit more. Uh -huh. So you tell, uh, you said that you have a square over here with uh, size three by three. Uh -huh. So is there something you can do with that? Yes. Yes, so as it's a square, the sides are the same. And the sides are using the coordinates of the king and the queen. Mm -hmm. So, okay, let's let's expand that out. So I, I say three equals three. And in this case, then I say king is three, the king's x is three and the queen's x is one. Um, so, 3 minus 1. Actually, the king's x is 1. Okay, and it's 3. Okay, so um, 1. So how do I get 3 over here? So if, oh, so this is 0, and this 1, 2, and 3. Okay, so the, the queen's coordinate, let's say I'm not on this point. Let's say I'm on this square itself. So from this square to this square, the distance is actually two, not three. The same thing over here from this square to this square, the distance is actually two and not three. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this I think makes a lot more sense. The three makes sense to me. So I say two equals two. And in this case, two is the k's x coordinate, which is, so let's say kx minus q's x coordinate and which actually comes down to 3 minus 1 which is 2 so it checks out and the same thing this is k's y coordinate minus q's y coordinate mm -hmm. and that is 4 minus 2 that's 2 so that checks out but this diagonal can also extend on the negative space mm -hmm. so what if the k was over here in this case, the the equation would be the same, but I think these values would need to be switched. Mm -hmm. But I don't care about the signs of the values, so maybe I can just take the absolutes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so this, this makes sense. Um, I think for diagonal, this would work. Even if, even if my k is over here, you know, um, if the k is over there, then one of these values would be switched and or the the values on the y coordinates would be switched and it would still check out yeah so let me just write down the third scenario which is diagonal if the absolute value kx minus qx is the absolute value ky minus qy then i have the answer that's true so we have all three scenarios in front mm -hmm. of us right yep. so can you write a function for me yeah absolutely so let's let's say i have the function over here and let's call it a checkmate function mm -hmm. and you mentioned that the function will take the four coordinates so kx, ky, qx, and qy. Okay, so I can just have a series of three if statements mm -hmm. to see whether or not they pass. So if, it'll be exactly the same as that. So if kx equals qx, 
Actually, I won't even need three of statements. I can I can just do one mm -hmm. and say or if ky equals qy or if the absolute value of the differences. Let's say absolute value is just encapsulated um, and it gives me the absolute value. Mm -hmm. So kx minus qx equals abs ky minus qy. So if this holds, you return true, else you return false. Mm -hmm. Now, thinking a bit more about this, these coordinates will need to be validated in some of our forms. So it's an 8 by 8 matrix. So mm -hmm. I just need to make sure that the values coming in, mm -hmm. first of all, are integers. And mm -hmm. they are bound by those numbers. So let's say I have, even before the if statement, I'm mm -hmm. just calling a validate sub, uh, sub function. Validate. Can you make the fonts a little bigger? Uh, it's yes. hard for me to read. Yes. So let's see over here I have I have a validate function. Mm -hmm. And it's a sub function of the check checkmate function. Mm -hmm. So I'll just say function validate. And what it'll do is It'll say if so for each one for each one of these arguments. Mm -hmm. So let's say I'm iterating over the arguments for each, um, and let's say the for when I iterate over it, the arguments we call it L. Let's say for each L, mm -hmm. you do that, and I will have two checks. Mm -hmm. The first is if if L is integer or if L is less than equal to eight or if L is greater than equal to one. Mm -hmm do nothing. Basically, you won't do anything and we can progress with our actual if statements and scenarios. Mm -hmm. But if if this doesn't meet then the else statement, I can say throw an error. Mm -hmm. So you're checking for a positive integer, right? Yes. That's, that's a good point. Yes, this would need to be a positive integer. Mm -hmm. um, but Actually, I wouldn't need to explicitly check for it because I mm -hmm. just check whether or not it's an integer. If it's mm -hmm. negative, then I wouldn't pass these two anyways. Okay. And maybe I don't even need to check for if it's, if it's an integer. I can just check for the ASCII values. But I think, I think this, this check would work very well. So what did we learn today? Well, basically, if you have a complex problem, scale it down and make sure that you're on the same page as the interviewer. And that will make solving the problem so much faster and so much easier. So this was it for this week's Whiteboard Wednesday. I will see you next week and make sure you subscribe so that you get notified when the next video comes out. Take care.